I have no disclosures. So if you should know about the fire triangle because these things happen. So you, you should know that there's oxygenation, fuel, and an igniter that's necessary. And most common, obviously, it's in head and neck. So you want to avoid to get into this problem. Fuse will teach you that. Same thing here. You want to know about stray energy. You want to know uh, what the thermal imprints are of your instruments. Otherwise, this stuff happens, OK? This is a GYN case. This is the same patient seven operations later on, on the right side. Uh, that was an inad inadvertent injury of the colon during a GYN case. You want to know how to use a dispersive electrode. You, don't, you want to, especially in kids, you don't want to cut the electrode like 10% of um, academic surgeons in this country felt was uh, reasonable to do, because then you get this problem, third degree burns due to uh, dispersive electron problems, especially in small people. And you want to know about um, stray energy in just routine laparoscopic cases. Uh, this senator made the news because he died after a routine laparoscopic cholestectomy in unrecognized septic complications. Now, 17-year-old kid, Nissen van der Plukation, unrecognized perforation of the stomach and sepsis, dead. And there's plenty of cases in this country currently under expert review in a lawyer's office about this. Now, you don't have to have complications that lead to death all the time. This is a case where there was a perforation, it was recognized, operated on, and then these things were seen. So many times it doesn't lead to complete uh, necrosis of the bowel wall, but you have all these traces of thermal injury on the bowel. So you already know, you know you're driving a car that's way too fast for you. You gotta know how to drive that car safely around the corner. And uh, these things are not um, uh, rare. So it's, the guess is about one to two per thousand laparoscopic operation. Here the number is 0.85% in, in a review of the true reported cases for laparoscopic surgery. That's when you consider two million laparoscopic cases a year in the United States alone, that's a pretty good number. And the mortality, 3% overall, almost 8% for unrecognized injuries. The average mortality for colon resection in this country is less than 2%. So this is, for 2017, that's an extremely high mortality. There's no mortality for Whipple procedures almost anymore. Remember that. The French took the FUSE program and made it mandatory for everybody in the country. Okay? And they report in detail which instrument how often gets involved, gets involved in um, these injuries and the causes of reoperations. It's basically uh, am among the, the, the most common causes for reoperations. This is an email from a, a chief of um, thoracic, cardiothoracic surgery at Kaiser, where I work. And you just look at the wording of this. And I'm glad you're here because you learned that that wording is all wrong. But what he says, at least he understands that he doesn't know that he doesn't know. And that's the first step. And you are sitting in the room. You already went through that first step. That's why you're here, and I'm glad you, you are. So as I said, you know, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands of these things happen. Cost a lot of money. Cost a lot of pain. Death and destruction. And it's clear that we are here because we wouldn't go to an operation if our colleague that operates on us wouldn't know about this. And that's why we have FUSE. You know about the program, obviously, and I hope that everybody sitting in this room that's not a speaker and already cer certified will be certified at the end of the day. Thank you very much. And at this point, I would like to ask Jessica, who is our brain behind the operations to quickly, in a couple of minutes, tell you if you want to stay for the FUSE exam, how this works. Jessica, thank you.